Rock Paper Podcast. This is Beat Paper, Paper Covers Rock. Rock Beats is the Shane Covers non-stop. Never know what new kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, or hip-hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has. Could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the Rock Paper Podcast. Double decker fudge round, rolling round town. Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero, he's your bestie. Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley. Rock Paper Podcast. Hey, everybody. Shane Presley here. Rock Paper Podcast coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Hanging out via Zoom with Dane Lewis. How's it going? Good, man. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Shane. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, this is uh, very cool. I've been um, been doing quite a few. I've been, like, I did a lot of uh, you know stuff via Zoom uh, during the pandemic. And uh, got me out linking up uh, with some people around the country, and it was a lot of fun uh, getting to meet all kinds of new people. Right. Uh, a lot of times, my my show kind of focuses on um, St. Louis because that's I, I just it's a lot easier to record with my friends around town. And sure, but this is a fun way to kind of branch out and get to meet a lot of new people. And uh, absolutely, yeah. So you are uh, what uh, you you are based out of uh, Nashville now, but you are you're home for the holidays. You're saying right. Yeah, I actually drove through St. Louis the other night. Uh, I went. Um, I'm from out of Nashville now. I'm from Sioux City, Iowa, originally, which is a tri-state area, South Dakota, and Nebraska, and Iowa, right there. So that's that's where home is. So yeah, yep, back for the holidays. Yeah, right on. This uh, your your parents' uh, kitchen there or something? Yeah, my mom, my mom's kitchen. Yep. Yeah, so just kind of that was where I had a charger for a laptop. So nice, yeah. <laughs> well, shout out to mom and uh well you got your uh pup with you too as well right yeah it's otis yeah he's a big annoying bernie's mountain dog but <laughs> yeah he, uh, likes attention so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's running all over yeah we got uh uh java is like an eight-year-old uh pit boxer mix oh um, yeah and then uh i have a uh, storm she's like uh like a year and a half like She's a mutt. She's a she's a rescue. Yeah. Both of them are rescues. They're the best dogs, though, man. They're the oh, best. Yeah. She's like uh, great great Pyrenees and Australian Shepherd or something like that. Oh, that's an awesome mix. That kind of winds up looking like Otis does. Yeah. yeah. No, he's he just turned two last Friday. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've been. Uh, all over. I caught some. Uh, checked out some of your doing a little bit of homework. I checked out your TikTok and I saw a couple of videos with him and yeah. So, Thanks, yeah. man. No, just I like to get goofy on TikTok and just kind of keep it lighthearted. So it's yeah. it's fun. No, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, just having a good time. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a lot of fun. Man. All kinds of goofy stuff going on there every day. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's uh, you know, I think it's important as a creative, like to do that kind of stuff, like uh kind of let people that's kind of I mean, that's the the one nice thing I would say really about the social media aspect is like kind of letting people in on on your own life you know a little bit to where you see you more as a person instead of just the the singer and stuff so that's it man and it kind of leads into people's humanity you know rather than just some uh, person that you can't communicate with or talk to so that's yeah it does it does uh kind of stink that it's like you know become a a job in a sense you know managing all that stuff and uh, yeah my my PR team definitely uh, reminds me of that and how yeah. bad I have a job some days, but <laughs> no, it's a, uh, it is, it's a, it's quite a task for a lot of people. I know people that do it full time and that's their job and that's kind of right. a crazy deal, but it's, yeah. it's fun for sure too. I almost, uh, except for I have to go to work after this, but I almost got some beverages to, uh, to partake uh, with you. There you go. Yeah, Absolutely. I, uh, I noticed your uh, the the shotgunning some beers and yeah, I got to catch up on that too. I got to yeah. that's that's another one of my assignments on my social media calendar. I got to get back right. on shotgunning beers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's uh it's a little early for me to start typically, but right. you know, there's, there's been days that I've gone after around. Hey, you know? that's what that's what the holidays <laughs> are good for, man. Exactly. 
Uh, is the season to yeah. drink at noon. Yeah. <laughs> uh but uh yeah man so i guess uh you know i kind of like i said uh, before we hit record i don't i don't really know uh much about you i know uh i did do listen to some music and uh but i know this is what's fun about this is just where we can get to know a little more about each other and uh sure i guess uh take me back uh you say you you said you're back at home uh is that where uh where all of it started for you there yeah, man. Um, I back right before I got into high school, I kind of started playing guitar just as a little hobby thing, and I wanted to wrestle really bad. I I was kind of really big on wrestling, and my dad didn't want me to wrestle because he was worried I'd get hurt or starve myself or something like that. He was just kind of on a trope about he didn't really want me to do it, and he goes, "Well, why don't you just take your guitar that you got and start taking some lessons?" And I was like, "I don't really want to do that." And he goes, "All right, well, if you take guitar lessons for a week, uh." You know, you take one guitar lesson and you don't like it and you can wrestle. Do I have a deal? And I said, no, I want to wrestle. And he goes, too bad. You're going to take the guitar lesson. And it was, uh, it was kind of funny. And I took it and instantly I just ran with it from there. I didn't want to do, uh, didn't want to do anything else. So started a high school band and, um, you know, we had some, some small victories. We wound up opening for Marshall Tucker band and a couple other little smaller groups and, um, and then uh, wound up joining a hard rock group near the end of high school. And we had an offer for Warp Tour and something else that was kind of going to lean our way, but parents wouldn't let me drop out of high school as a junior. So <laughs> that was a good thing. And so left that group and um, started a country band called Saviors and Outlaws. And then we wound up going through so many lineup changes that I just decided to go out as a solo artist. And um, so that's kind of where I landed back in about 2018. And uh, I've been doing it that way ever since. And it's been good to me so far. So yeah. now my, I've had my band line up with me for about, yeah, we, we've had a couple changes too, but for the most part, my, my core group of guys have been with me for about two years. Um, my one guitarist for seven years, one bass player for three years, drummer for two years. And our new guitar player, we're just trying him out. Warren, he, he's been with us for going on a year now. So I let him, them name themselves. So we're kind of doing Dane Lewis and the Devil Knows Who for the band name. So, All right. but yeah, it's been it's been good, man. It's kind of cool to get back to the stomping grounds here and kind of remember a lot of the places I started with music and where it led me out before it led me out to Nashville. Yeah, well, I guess uh, so. You have uh, your current uh, single uh right now is um wh uh, whiskey wears off right 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 and uh i, well, I was watching that and uh they yeah, had the music video up on the youtube yeah and uh that i guess that was all filmed there in in iowa yeah yeah it was back here at the home in sioux city so and that was uh yeah we filmed that probably these uh two years ago april and we did a re-release uh or we we released it as a, uh, as a new single after I kind of wiped my discography last January on the 19th of January. So then yeah. this year, on the 20th, we're going to, we kind of had a lot of things going on all year and we're busy, which is good. Busy's good, but uh, we didn't have time to release the songs that we wanted to release. So this January 20th, we're going to be releasing a new single called fire um, that we're really, really excited about as well as, uh, a couple more singles that are going to lead into a full EP sometime this summer. So kind of oh, yeah. everyone can expect through the months following January, probably once or every other month be releasing a new single. So, yeah, man. Well, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about that day. Uh, whiskey wears off and uh, that video shoot. Cause it looked like uh, a real good time, a good party uh, in front of a packed house and, Boy, why don't you just come home with me tonight? Somewhere in the darkness we can find a light. On a sick collision course, this way life dies. It's feeling like we owe ourselves to give it a try. Said so no, no.
When the morning light comes, you'll be all alone again. So whether it's headaches, whether it's heartaches, somewhere in between, there will never be an ever for you and me. Cause I might not love you when the whiskey wears off. Just a cold hard truth from the soul's been lost. Like a ship out of sea with no water to cross. The thought of kind of crazy actually we um the day we shot that video we had let's see two shows and a music video so we we started shooting the video at 11 a.m definitely didn't have too much to drink so we were hung over that morning the night before uh <laughs> but we started shooting at 11 a.m and went all day till about five or six o'clock then we had a show and this is April in Iowa, so it's not really that friendly for temperature-wise. Uh, it, it, it got, I think it was like probably 40 or 50 degrees out. And we had a show outside at first. And after that, we played that show. <laughs> it led us to about 7 o'clock, and it was pretty much dark and freezing at that point. Right. And then so we went after that and filmed the rest of the video in front of the packed house down the road at, at a different bar and um and it was kind of crazy we we're just running all over god's country and then we played that sh we did the music video shoot for about an hour um with the crowd there and then we wound up playing another three hours for the people that were there and yeah it was a it was a long haul of a day but it was a lot of fun yeah yeah that's i mean that's cool that you uh and you get to celebrate in front of the the your friends and family and you know hometown yeah. crowd and stuff like getting to do that uh uh but and then i guess uh what you just what a couple months back you you moved, made the move to nashville yeah uh, april of april of 2022 is when i moved to nashville and yeah. that's been uh, really good to me ever since i've been I've been happy to be there so how do you uh i mean like kind of what goes into that decision uh to the, the this is the time like i'm i've made the it's time to make the move. Yeah. Um, well, we wanted to, um, we wanted to move way before, uh, we visited, uh, Nashville for the first time, me and my old drummer, his little brother drums for us. Now he's been with us for about two years, but, um, back in, back in 2020, August of 20, I think it was back. The pandemic still had most of Nashville shut down, but we went and visited for the first time and it was good. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We met up with a lot of our friends, and even though it was shut down, it was still kind of like, wow, okay, we got to be here. So we set ourselves a goal like 18 months out. Well, that old drummer wound up moving before um, we did, and now he's he's playing with uh, Bailey Zimmerman, so they're having a lot of really good success, and oh, they, nice. they're going out on the road with Morgan Wallen and some different guys. And um, but so we, um, but I kind of had to hold back. Um, my dad got in, he got COVID basically in November of 21 and he passed from that. And I had oh, to kind of, uh, settle out some different, um, farm estate business stuff. And just, it was, it was kind of crazy. I'm, I'm an only child. So it's just me and my mom. And, um, so I had to work some stuff out. So even though I wanted to move in, I think it was, well, originally it was going to be March and then we moved, pushed it back to January or even December possibly at, on getting out of here. And then, uh, and then I had to wind up pushing it back a little more. And so it wound up being about April. Um, but try to, try to make it as fast as possible. And, and we, we did 
at least a little bit of a job with that. But uh, my guitar player, Nick, uh, moved down with me. He moved down in June. Um, so he lives with me down there. And he's from Norfolk, Nebraska, which is about an hour and a half from where I am here. But, um, yeah, no, we've, we've loved it so far, man. It's been good to, again, to get a good lay of the land down there. And um, we got some fun shows coming up this summer. We're kind of trying to book ourselves a, our own summer tour. And it's been it's been fun. It's been humbling. And it's been good. Yeah, man. Well, I'm sorry to hear uh, about your dad, man. That's uh, that's tough. Yeah, it was cra- crazy, crazy times. But yeah. no, nah, he he left me with a lot of good lessons and things to kind of help carry on. So that was good. Yeah, I uh, I lost my mother in uh, 19 to uh, to brain cancer. Oh man! And uh, it was uh, you know we got the call. Things were, you know, there was some weird stuff, and then finally we got an answer that it was what it was going, but it was this this brain tumor, and uh, came back as uh, glioblastoma. That was in um, May of nineteen, and uh, we it was that di- got the diagnosis in June. The what was going on, and then she was gone December third. So, uh, you know, it was like crazy how fast it all went, and then. Uh, you know, and also like most of the time of that, like she's like nonverbal too. So like that was, it was tough, man, not to really like you know, get any kind of uh, goodbye or anything, you know, kind of stuff. Like it was, it was, it was brutal, yeah. man. It is, man. That was how my dad was too. Was two, yeah. two weeks in the ICU, you know, and I mean, you got three days that yeah. I went in, and it was just kind of an ER thing, and then all of a sudden they intubate them, and then that's three weeks that just on life support basically. And then yeah. that's it. You know, and it's, and it's crazy how fast it turns around. I mean, it does just in that, that kind of throws you for a whirlwind and try to get your life back together. And mm-hmm. sometimes it takes a lot longer. And that's kind of why the last year we've, you know, I haven't really been big out in public about it, but yeah, I mean, a lot of my friends and family and some of the fans knew, but you know, it kind of took a year to kind of get the world back together. And um, you know, that's just the way it is sometimes, but mm-hmm. that's why, it's been such a lag in, in releasing music, but we're really excited for 2023 to get out with some new music. And I think it's, I think it's a good time. It's the right time. However, I don't really believe in coincidences. I think that there's a reason for everything well, one way or another. So it's, uh, it's, you know, this is the time we're supposed to release this music for whatever reason. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I, uh, I'm, I'm with you. And I always, I, you know, I'm sure much like yourself, I, I, uh, I carry them my my mother with me everywhere like it's like uh i do like um here locally i do like a i did a benefit show uh trying to give back to some others uh so uh we did that uh in 21 and um you know that was like so i've been trying to do that i think i'm gonna try to do it again uh move it to uh may and this year for 23 and uh, may is actually uh Brain Cancer Awareness Month, so I figured that might be a little more appropriate to. There you so, go. Yeah, absolutely, so, man. That's a great time, man. Like, you'll have to let me know. I'm not that far from St. Louis. I'd love to swing out and say, "Hey, that'd be yeah, cool. that'd be cool." Yeah, man. Uh, well, you, uh, yeah. So hopefully we will get you on on the road and uh, getting to share some of these new songs and uh, maybe a, a swing yeah. through St. Louis here and and party absolutely. with us. Absolutely, man. It ain't too far. Like I said, I yeah. went through there the other night. I drove back through the night. I kind of like that, so I beat the traffic, but. St. Louis is crazy for traffic, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I like going through there about midnight, one in the morning, so I don't have to deal with it. Yeah. It was, uh, it was uh, like a pretty uh, iconic, I guess, uh, photo of uh, from downtown. Off of, like, I think, I'm think i pretty sure it's off Broadway or in that area. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it looks like, uh, you know, a Kino board, you know, it's like uh, oh, yeah. it's just like uh 70 64 what you know it's like all these different right. high it's like so much happening right there that uh highways merging and everything else so right. um yeah it's a little chaotic sometimes uh trying to get through there but uh it's uh i'm actually like about uh 40 miles west of uh st louis where where i live but i, I spend most of my time hanging out down in the city uh going to shows and everything else so um uh, but uh yeah, man, it's it's always a lot of fun down there. I have a good time and enjoy uh, the. I mean, the music. Uh, St. Louis, like I, I don't know. I, I say it a lot. I've been saying it for years doing the show, but like, 
I feel like St. Louis has kind of been bubbling under as this like hotbed of, of talent. And, uh, we know we're kind of like, I feel like we're like one of the, uh, you know, close to being an, uh, considered like an Austin or a Nashville or something like that. Absolutely, man. No, I've heard a lot about that too. It's, 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 it's gotta be someone else next. It's, uh, yeah. you know, and it's a uh, Nashville kind of took over for LA Nashville and Austin both kind of took over for LA in a lot of different ways. And I mean, LA still got some stuff going on, but it's, it's kind of changing. So I've, I've heard that a lot. My bass players got a lot of friends in different, uh, in like the punk community and rock, different rock bands and stuff like that, that are, centered out at st louis and it sounds like they got a really killer scene out there we haven't got out there yet but yeah um no it's a it's it's definitely got a hotbed for some cool new stuff coming up well we got a lot of really uh great clubs uh, we got a, some a lot of people investing uh in new you know spots to play so that's sure. always that's always great that people other uh, people uh you know want to believe in and want to support it and uh we've also uh Last year, they relaunched a big uh, festival called Music at the Intersection, where they brought in a lot of uh, great headliners, but they also had the lineup stacked full of uh, local favorites. And so that's, that's what I think is like the key to kind of blending those two, putting all of our locals on a stage with uh, the greats that we know and then like and putting them right where they, you know, showing people they belong here just like anybody else. So uh that's good, man. That's important. But yeah, hopefully we, uh, you know, I don't know. I, uh, I feel like, uh, I feel like people kind of looked at St. Louis like a little bit, you know, when you know, we had to, you know, Nelly hit and stuff and a couple, yeah. a couple of things like that. And, uh, you know, and then Chingy a couple of years later and, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, but I feel like, uh, it's really kind of spotty for like really big acts making it out of st louis and then like a lot of people have moved on and then like you know still claim st louis is home but uh um, yeah you know so i just kind of i feel like we're we're due we're probably we're yeah absolutely yeah. so it, it'll ring through man it, it always does and like yeah. my hometown is um tommy Bowen that played with deep purple and the james gang and he had his own solo career he's about the only person that really ever got out of sioux city iowa there's a guy that wound up playing for taylor swift playing guitar for her that made it out but you know, the guy that plays for Taylor Swift, you don't really yeah. know the name unless you're yeah. from here. But um, yeah, no, it's it's funny, that, but it always it always comes in cycles. And hopefully, you know, I think someone will pop out of St. Louis before no time anyway, especially yeah. with the Internet and TikTok and the way that things are now. There's so many different outlets for artists to make a new footprint that they wouldn't have been able to make years and years ago. So, yeah, um, no, it, it's definitely the environment for it. Yeah. So uh, now you're in Nashville. You're uh, are you getting to to do all the uh, all the things? You're getting to you know doing like the songwriter rounds and stuff like that. And uh, just starting to get into it, man. Um, I I, uh, I kind of stay away from playing on Broadway and stuff like that. It kind of puts you in a different not not in a bad class at all. But I've heard a lot of people get trapped down there and stuff like that because they enjoy the money and they enjoy the gratification of it. And there's nothing wrong with it, by the way. Um, but it's just kind of not the way to get found anymore. And we like to tour out of Nashville more than anything. It's a good place to bump elbows and meet people. And that's kind of what we're there for. But right. yeah, I played a couple different rounds and a couple uh, during CMA Fest. Um, we played a couple different bars down there and stuff. And it's cool. We're, we're working on kind of rebranding ourselves and doing a lot of new stuff in this new year. So uh, hopefully a lot more will be coming up very soon. Working, trying to work with a new agency on possibly booking some shows and things like that too. So it's just kind of all, you know, at, at grassroots level right now, but it's, it's been cool. Nashville has been a lot of fun. It's been very enlightening to say the least. So, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I think that's like the, one of the, the key things of what makes, uh, St. Louis, uh, a great music town also is, uh, that it's affordable, you know, and it's like, yeah. And, and easy to tour out of. So uh, much, much like, much like Nashville. I know, I know there's parts in Nashville. It's a little more expensive than others, but Midwest here is a lot more cheap, you know, a lot cheaper, uh, reasonable lifestyle than, uh, the coast and stuff. So man, oh man, I went to dinner with some friends last night and I just kind of, it was, they had their kids with them and stuff. And I grabbed the check and they go, you didn't have to do that. And I was like, well, the check's $80, which is, <laughs> you know, not, not to shake nothing at that, but like, that's like three beers on Broadway <laughs> in right. Nashville. So yeah, I know I'm, I'm all about Nash the Midwest being much cheaper than uh, those bigger cities. Nashville's kind of gotten up there quite a bit with 
the cost of living in Nashville isn't near as expensive as just everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm all for the the Midwest. It's, it's kind of good too, man. I mean, that's that's the draw of it. And yeah, there's a beauty I, in that too. I think uh, I don't know. I didn't, uh, it was a headline, um, but like even like uh, something they said something about like even like New York Broadway performers were moving to St. Louis and stuff like, uh, to be a part of the arts, uh, theater here in in St. Louis and stuff, just because of that, it is a a much affordable, more affordable lifestyle and stuff. So, Uh so it's cool that, uh, people are realizing like that, you know, you don't, you don't need to be from a LA or New York to make it, you know, you can make it anywhere. Uh, so, um, especially now, like you said, with the internet, having all these things that are at our fingertips and stuff, it's, it's people will recognize you wherever you're at. It's really up to the artist, man, and, it, and I mean, Pete, the world's gotten substantially smaller since uh, since the internet boom and everything like that. And right. It, it's it's really up to your your fan base, and most of your fan base will they'll travel, you know. Yeah. So it's uh yeah, no, it's cool. I'm glad to see you getting the recognition out there. Yeah. Um, that's that's important. So uh, what's uh, do you have a? Is there anything like crazy yet? Uh, you you getting to any like uh celebrity run-ins or anything like that uh you were you kind of yeah. like, kind of nerd kind of geeked out on uh down there in nashville uh, there's there's a couple of different ways you could say it um i almost got in a fight with a pretty big one a couple of weeks ago Uh-oh. i won't see who he is but he had too many whiskey glasses that night and uh shoulder checked the hell out of me at the bar and yeah, it was fun. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, there's uh, yeah, there's been some run-ins, uh, some good, some bad. Uh, but it's always good. We're, we're good friends at the Co Wetzel Camp. They're, they're good buddies of ours, and they always roll through there. So it's good to see those guys when they come to town. And um, yeah, it, it, there's everybody out there. I mean, shoot, I, I I had a running joke of like I run into Chris Young more than I do my friends because um, uh-huh. I've seen him like everywhere. Um, talk to him because also that's the nice thing about Nashville too though is um, I remember like in my hometown we'd play shows with like Brantley Gilbert or Trace Adkins and stuff like that and uh, both great camps great guys by the way Um, but we go out after the show and you don't get a minute you know to talk to anybody because you're getting swarmed and and, you know this is in my hometown so it wasn't near what it is Nashville but it's cool how in Nashville um, everybody's really respectful of those artists space and stuff like that. And they don't really try to just crowd them and get autographs or pictures and stuff like that. Sometimes there's a, there's a setting for it and there's a setting where they're just trying to be normal people. So, um, but yeah, I've seen Chris Young about 10 times just running through bars or restaurants, right. but, um, and there's a lot of other artists that are really cool that are out there that I run into all the time. And it's kind of funny getting in the loop with some of those folks and you just wind up running in the same crowds. And um, I'm good friends with a guy that uh, used to play with the Cadillac three when they were a band called American bang a couple of years yeah. ago. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fun, man. It's, it's a, it's a really small town. It's a really huge, small town. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I, uh, I don't know. I think that stuff's funny too. Like, um, I used to work in a, a bar here in, in St. Louis and uh, pretty, uh, pretty great spot if you in uh, historically and stuff. If you ever uh, make it this way, it's uh, Broadway Oyster Bar down on, on Broadway. I've heard of it. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's a couple blocks from uh, the ballpark. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we, uh, I mean, the food's amazing and the, but uh, the music's, you know, seven days a week. And we used to get uh, a lot of, you know, clientele like that and uh there'll be uh i was in there one night it was like the uh was a uh, uh motor motocross was in town and okay. yeah that uh i think it what's his uh jeremy jeremy mcgrath i think is his yeah. name yep he's uh he's sitting there eating dinner and uh I, I worked the door there and people were like is that jeremy mcgrath and i'm like i don't, I don't know i mean like maybe <laughs> like I don't, uh, especially him, like, you know, usually he's, I see him with a helmet on, so it's like, I don't really know. <laughs> right. Uh, that is funny, man. That's... But it was like, uh, but, you know, that same kind of thing. It's like, I'm not going to go bother the guy if he's eating dinner and stuff. It's like, he's not there to to be Jeremy. He's just there, to, you know, having a meal. So, that was uh, fun. yeah, you got to be, 
respectful of that stuff when people are, you know, not necessarily uh, on the clock kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, the biggest, the biggest geek out I think I've had, and I didn't say, I didn't talk to him at all, but I was actually on a trip to Europe and I was coming back from London, um, to, to New York. And, uh, I, I was sat down in the, in the, uh, terminal area, whatever. And there were these two young, uh, British girls. I mean, like five and 10 years old or whatever. And, and their mom was there and she was like, do you want anything? And mommy, I want to book in some candy. And <laughs> so the mom went off and got, went to go get them stuff for the plane to keep them entertained. And, and the dad was there, uh, who I thought was the dad, but it wanted, it was mom's boyfriend. And he goes, where's your mom at? And I was just kind of like, man, that guy, like he's, he's about my height, my build. I was like, he looks a lot like David Harbor from stranger things, but he had a mask on. <laughs> Like, nah, I was like, there's no way. Well, it was, it was <laughs> David Harbour and his um, girlfriend is that pop gal um, has make me smile, uh, whatever. But uh, she, she went, that was who that was. And I was like, oh my God. So yeah. we both had priority boarding. So I'd stepped up and he had a bucket hat on and a mask on to hide himself. And I, cause I didn't realize over in Europe, stranger things is, way bigger than it is in the United States. I mean, oh, yeah. it's everywhere and people are the t-shirts and everything. I mean, it's huge over there, mm-hmm. uh, even bigger than the U S. So it was funny. So he'd given the, the workers passport and she looks and goes, sir, can you pull your mask down, please? Like there's no <laughs> way. And then he didn't, she goes, Oh, okay. Put it back up. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny. Cause I'm sure the 2020 thing, the mask was a great thing for, hiding that you're a celebrity because right. you can fit in with everybody. But now if you're wearing a mask, it almost like makes people look at you specifically. <laughs> so, but it was funny. That was how he was hiding who he was. And I was like, I can't say hi to him. I can't say, you know, I can't, that's like a lifetime of bad karma for any success I may find <laughs> in getting swarmed. But when we got off the airport, I was like the exit row, um, right behind the first class row where he was. And, and he left a book there or whatever. And I about grabbed it to bring to him or something, but I was like, ah, maybe he meant to leave it. And, uh, and he goes, uh, he turned around and started coming back. And as he was walking back past me, I was like, glad you didn't die hop. And <laughs> he's like, he kind of looks at me and just nods and shakes uh. his head. But it was like, kind of like a thanks for not making a scene about it. But yeah, that's funny. Yeah. And so I was like, that was kind of a perfect thing. But in my world, I don't meet a lot of actors. Uh, so I, that's what I was geeking out for sure on that one. But, um, yeah. no, that was funny. Uh, well, yeah, in Nashville, you'll run into people like that too. I mean, oh, there's, yeah. it seems like everybody comes through, and so yeah, so I, I usually try to avoid them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you uh, you you you've been watching uh, or oh, back in the summer were you watching Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah, I'm all caught up. It's yeah. it's pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, that's oh, a yeah. that's a solid show, man. It's a lot of fun. It's a uh, it's pretty wild. I don't know, I've been, Every uh, time you think they're ending it, and then yeah. it just goes back, and there's the world's falling apart again. Oh yeah, yeah. What uh, what else you been watching? You got any? Uh, you, any uh, what are you binging lately? Uh, neck deep in Yellowstone, like a lot of people. Um, there's, let's see, what was the one that I was watching recently? Um, gosh, I can't remember. But I mean, it's I kind of I ter- have a, such a high freaking turnover on all of them. I, I wound up binging The Sopranos. I'd never I'd never watched it top to bottom before, and so I went back and I watched all of it a couple months back, and that was that was good to get through. But yeah, no uh, Yellowstone. I'm watching every week. They just came out with the offshoot with Harrison Ford, 1923. So that one's pretty good. I watched the first episode of that last night, and um, yeah, no, it's just kind of whatever um i don't know i actually watched a movie last night called where the crawdads thing that just came out and that was like really good i love twist endings so that yeah. that was pretty sick it was into that uh yeah buddy recommended it he said it was, uh he said he got it's it's pretty uh emotional yeah it's super intense yeah. man but it's cool yeah i have to check that out i've been wanting to it's been on the list for a little bit i need to sit down and do that um but yeah, uh, Yellowstone is cool to see uh, Laney Wilson's career blowing up and 
Dude, yes. Lainey's such a sweetheart. I met her at uh, Country Radio Seminar last year in February and got to talk to her for about five minutes and stuff. And I'd, I'd never met her formally before, but I'd had back and forth with her on Instagram and stuff. So it was, she's such a cool artist and such a cool human. Um, she's been working her ass off for years. And yeah. uh, and finally, she got the recognition that she's she's very, very much deserved. So um it's it's gone really well for recently it's cool to see her getting her moment in the spotlight that's yeah. that's uh, pretty cool couldn't happen to a better person yeah yeah she just rolled through town uh the uh wil a local country local station here in town uh sure. did yeah. a big did a big uh holiday party and uh they had chris jansen yeah uh, tyler hubbard and uh mitchell tenpenny and laney wilson so cool i saw mitchell a little while ago he's he's doing good but yeah it's uh no laney's laney's awesome man yeah. I'm, I'm actually a really big fan of hers uh, i work i've um met with the producer that did the they kind of do that dolby atmos sound stuff the surround spatial audio and that's kind of the big new hub and the guy that just did a record uh, kind of gave me a sneak peek of of what she'd been working on before a record came out and it's nice. I'm a fan. She did really good. So um no, she's she's an awesome, awesome artist, an awesome person. So I'm really stoked to see her having that success. Yeah. Well tell me uh you, you mentioned it briefly, the uh about new music coming in twenty three. Uh the single uh fire available everywhere. January twentieth. January twentieth. And a few missed calls She finally changed her mind And came along as a one night, one time Give it a try kind of thing I think with one taste like night to day To put the world on its head A new coming of age And in no time show This here will be the only life she craves We're gonna light it up Until that sun burns out Going till we get it up and then we go another round So come whiskey with a Tennessee burn Or a backwoods party at the next left turn There's a flame lighting up the midnight sky Just like the desire in a young girl's eyes There ain't nothing like a one of the three Mix it on up and you're bound to see Ain't just a promise, it's a guarantee With a good time, good whiskey Or desire comes fire On the rock, so you think she's tough. Got the kind of walk that leaves your love in the dust. Got you tripping and a calling all because you're falling for everything she's got. Spent my last dime for one more time. Trade off my soul to make her last name mine. Put down the barrel of a loaded gun for just one shot. She's gonna tear it up. Your whole world in your heart. And with any love, she'll choke it up. The smoke rings in the dark So come whiskey with a Tennessee burn Or a backwoods party at the next left turn There's a flame lighting up the midnight sky Just like the desire in a young girl's eyes There ain't nothing like a one of the three Mix it on up and you're bound to see There ain't just a promise, it's a guarantee That with a good time, good whiskey Or desire comes back Tennessee burn or backwoods party at the next left turn. There's a flame lighting up the midnight sky. It's like the desire in a young girl's eyes. There ain't nothing like a one of the three. Mix it on up and you're bound to see it. Ain't just a promise, it's a guarantee that with a good time, good whiskey, or desire comes fire.
Uh, we'll have a pre-save link uh, if you're listening yep. to this before that. Uh, so check that out. Those are, uh, I don't think a lot of people realize, but that's a great way to, you know, the one you're getting it immediately to your feed. So you uh, you can save it to your favorite playlist and stuff. But those are a great way to get uh, artists like a uh, good boost uh, on the first day, and which is yeah. super important. It's it's crucial, man. I mean, that's kind of everything for us. That's kind of our lifeblood. So at any time we can get out and push the pre-save link, that's really good. And um, so that that's awesome. Uh, if anyone wants to go check out the pre-save link, it's in my bio on my Instagram, and it's on the website. Um, everything like that. It's it's um, this. Is, I hope the single does pretty well. But yeah, we got we got one slated to come out uh, January twentieth. Uh, the follow up single is going to be coming out. I think on St. Patrick's Day. Um, and I haven't really told a lot of folks about that one yet, but I'll drop it here. That one's called bad guy. So that's going to be, um, that's going to be coming out in St. Patrick's day. And then we got a third single coming out shortly after that. And then kind of a month gap. And then we're releasing the full EP. So I think it's going to be five songs and we're actually going back into a couple different studios here very, very soon to record some new stuff too. That might be, dropped either along the way or afterwards and i don't know we kind of haven't decided yet but we're the bosses again so yeah. we, we kind of went through some management changeover and we're really really happy with it so far and um we uh so we're we're our own boss again and we're right. kind of releasing the music the way we want to so that's kind of been another reason why we haven't had music out for a year but it's uh it's good to get back in the saddle and really release some stuff because it's only doing a disservice to the fans if we're not so yeah what uh now uh, like of this uh upcoming ep and stuff is this like do you do you write all these songs are you uh the write all yeah. the lyrics yeah, I, I write. I've written everything that we've released, or, or I guess that's kind of redundant now because we only got the one single out. But uh, yeah, no, I write. I write everything that we're doing, or at least that we're working on right now. I've written all the lyrics and most of the music for it. And uh, but my band guys, I like giving them, you know, kind of a good rein to run around and, and do what they want to do on it too, and because they're going to be the guys playing it. So, but yeah. Um, no, I, I kind of gave the the premise and the the arrangement for the song as well as all the lyrics and stuff like that. It's it's all me, so it's and it's all real stories. It's all real things that I've experienced and done, and that's kind of um, why I, that after college and stuff like that, before moving to Nashville, I kind of just spent three years in the world. I was uh, finish. I was doing finished carpentry work and stuff like that, and playing little dive bars and just kind of doing life and. Um, I think it's important that a lot of folks kind of take some time if you're going to write songs and uh, share your experiences with people that you go out and do that kind of thing. Because if not, then what are you telling anybody about that that they don't know? And so you got to have a story, you got to have something to say. So, um, but yeah, all these songs are just real life experiences, things that I went through, things that I did. And um, and it's fun, man. It's all, there's some funny songs, there's some sad songs, and there's some in between just kind of headbangers. So yeah. we're kind of more that edgy rock country stuff like uh, eric church and aldine and stuff that's kind of more our our speed so yeah yeah those uh some of the greats man yeah, those good, those good. to be like them man that's yeah. it. They're, they're good dudes too is from people that i've known that have worked with them and yeah. so it's kind of that's the biggest thing i've, I've really kind of tried to take away from, from doing a lot of the music stuff lately has been um just try to be a good person because there's a lot of shitty people in this industry too. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you uh, you mentioning um, earlier too opening for Brantley, um, yep, and uh, kind of triggered a memory. Uh, they uh, in I think it was oct- October 2011. He came to town and uh-huh. played played at the pageant. Uh, it's like a 2000 something seat, uh, theater and, uh, this group walked out on stage and they said their name and I, you, you just like, you're like, what is it? I don't even, you know, you couldn't hardly even understand what they said. Cause it just sounded like mumble at the time, but, uh, it turns out they, they said their name was Florida Georgia line and, <laughs> uh, and that you know again now as we all know that name but at the time like you're like what they just say like yeah and uh 
And then uh, after that show, I got to meet uh, Brian and Tyler at the merch table. Uh, and they came back and played. Um, I think it was like a month later at a little bar, uh, Blueberry Hill across the street for like 100 people, 150 people or something like that. Cool. Um, and uh, it was just wild like to kind of you know i became friendly with those guys they were doing a lot of like this kind of uh you know harder country stuff a little bit on their first ep i was gonna uh, say they were they were badass back then they were really yeah. cool <laughs> i really yeah. like their, their early stuff was really kind of rocky and i like yeah. that wow. yeah backwoods beauty queen and stuff like there was a uh, uh there was definitely a lot of good jams and then like they you know then uh, uh definitely kind of got a little more polished uh with some of the working with Joey Moy and stuff yeah. with, uh, on the rec- new records and things, but it was just kind of cool to be a part of something before, before even cruise hit and stuff like yeah. that. Was, and then like, yeah, that was a game changer. And then of, like the next time they, uh, so it was like I said, they headlined that show for like 150 people. And the next time they headlined in St. Louis, there was 10,000 people at the arena. Uh, That's crazy, man. Uh, and I'm just like, it was crazy. nuts how fast, like they, that, took a rocket to the top and just popped off man and it is it is cool how that happens a lot to and it usually happens to good guys you know yeah. and that's it's it's awesome that you got to meet them back when they're still doing the rock country thing and yeah and, and, uh, yeah i don't know it's it's that's kind of the dream for everybody but it's good to see it happen to good people and and um no that's, that's funny though but yeah brantley and his team man i mean when i say the nicest people we've ever played with and the most humble down to earth folks i mean brantley i talked to him quite a bit that day and I, my my godson's name's brantley he's like my nephew his dad's like my brother and, um he his parents had caught a drumstick and i was like hey can you sign this for my net for my godson brantley and, he, and i was like do you mind if i take a video for him and he goes like, hey hey man we're gonna be taken care of for you whatever you know just it was so cool and that the kid just thought the world of it and uh and brantley like i mean he sat there with his merch guy packing up merch packages and stuff you know they laid it all out so he could go through and sign it and go back to the bus but he was like no he sat there and folded up all these little flags and uh cd packages and stuff like that for people and putting them in bags and boxes and I was like, you need any help, man? He's like, no, I think we got it, but thank you very much, man. He he spent a lot of time talking to all of us, and God, he's just, he's very considerate, good, good down to earth human. And it was, uh, this cool. You don't see that a lot. Even, even amongst the nice people, you don't see that a lot. So Brantley's the genuine article. Really, really great, great person. Yeah. I never really like, you know, got to meet him or, you know, like fully like get to know him or anything, but like, uh, they also did like a this uh, country throwdown tour uh, with Willie yeah. Nelson, and yeah. he, was, he was on a side stage, and I got to picture with him, and um, uh, that that whole day was like ridiculously stacked. Uh, uh, Lee Bryce and Randy Hauser, and yeah. I mean, like it was a it was a part total party. Heck yeah, uh, but uh, but yeah, it was, so it was a lot of fun, like especially in a smaller festival setting like that, that we, you know, a lot of those guys are just hanging out and got to, you know, got to say, Hey, and, you know, meet them a little bit. Absolutely. No, and it, that's cool. It's, it's yeah. always nice to see them hanging out and still kind of yeah. down to earth, man. <laughs> uh, you, uh, so, uh, I was thinking also, uh, speaking of Brantley and, and, uh, mentioning you on TikTok. you ever, uh, you ever come across my, my buddy, Matt F Bosler's videos. On, uh, Sounds TikTok. really familiar. I probably have. He does like uh, he covers uh, "Read Me My Rights" from Brantley Gilbert for every, okay, yeah, every, yeah. every song. I'll have every... to check him. Out. I'll have to check him out. Oh yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. I'll have to check him out again. Now that you've said that's the, that's your buddy. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's he's uh he's he's a friend here in town, and he also has a podcast. So he's kind of my my podcast rival so we uh cool we have, we have a long running feud together that's good <laughs> that's awesome keeps you uh, on your toes that way yeah but he uh <laughs> if you if you don't know uh yeah matt uh makes a lot of videos with his his shirt off and doing different things with his nipples uh while <laughs> while playing read me my rights uh you know yeah, 
so. I've seen that. Yeah. That's crazy good. Uh, this is funny. Well, he did a whole, uh, he actually, I don't know. I think he, he said something about being in contact with Brantley. I think like they were, they, you know, they've been aware of it. So they were going to do something together. And I don't think that, I don't think it panned out, but, um, and then, but he did a, Matt did a whole record of, uh, like these tough guy country songs and synth covers. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Like uh whoop a man's ass. And, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know. So anyway, it's really, really funny that he, um, <laughs> you know, he, that he put a whole record together of uh, these songs. Yeah. That's funny as hell. So, I, just, I just looked him up on TikTok. I got to watch some yeah. of those later. I saw, I've, I've definitely seen him before. That's funny. Oh yeah. But, uh, uh, but yeah, man. So uh, you can find uh, all things Dane Lewis at uh, DaneLewisOfficial.com, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, get plugged in and uh, keep an eye out. Like I said, brand new tunes coming in January. And um, but yeah, man, I got a couple of questions and I'll let you get out of here. Uh, all right. I, uh, one I've been having fun with is uh, uh, so day comes along, we get a, a Dane Lewis action figure. Uh, <laughs> what would you like to see as like maybe your, your three accessories to go with your action figure? Uh, let's see a bottle of Jameson probably would be one. Um, <laughs> uh, it would be any, any Gibson guitar, uh, pretty much. I'm just kind of a Gibson nut. So yeah. any, any plus Paul three thirty five, a J 45, anything. And, um, God, Probably, probably my dog. I don't know if they yeah. make a dog accessory, but that'd be that'd probably be about the three. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned it. I was, I mean, I was gonna ask about um, the whiskey because uh, there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of Jack Daniels in the video. I didn't know if that was still your uh, whiskey choice or not. Or it really never was. Yeah. Uh, it was just kind of that's man. Everybody, everybody. If you're in country music or even rock, they're like, "Oh yeah, you gotta drink Jack Daniels." Yeah. Jack Daniels is. I was like, Jack Daniels makes me almost get in fights with cops and pee in closets. So I don't really <laughs> like Jack Daniels that I'm much. I'm pretty anymore. sure. I'm pretty sure that's their slogan, right? Yeah, that's pretty much fight a cop and pee in a closet. <laughs> Jack Daniels whiskey. <laughs> but no, it, man, I just it 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 just kind of. I mean, I know it that's the point is that it messes you up, but I can pace myself with Jameson and kind of be kind of calm and cool. I can't do that with Jack Daniels and it, it bites really hard. And I don't know. I'd really like Jameson a lot more. So yeah. it's a lot more friendly to me, except for my best friend's wedding, but we won't talk about that. That was, <laughs> that was a heck of a day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, not to keep going back to TikTok, but I did, uh, I, I noticed on you some of your uh, shotgun videos. You you always have a a, a saying and stuff. Like there's always like some kind of great saying. And stuff. I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't. I never had any of those. But you got you got a couple of real good ones. And so oh, um, they always uh were cracking me up too. Those are my favorite. I like I like adding that to every toast. Is you know like ocean right. or beer, and I was a duck, and that, that one's one of my favorites. And yeah. here's the trees, the blows to the trees, and yeah, there's there's a bunch of different little goofy but, sayings. And but those ones. those seem to like always come out. You know, again, like you're saying the toast, like at a wedding and stuff. Like somebody will have some kind of, you know, like man, that's like who who's you know who that keeps that from? in the bank? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, but. uh all right, man. What about a um, dream duet or a collaboration? Is there is is there anybody in particular that you would love? Yeah. To work with? Um. I there, there's uh two both female artists. I'd love to do a song with Lainey, but now that's like kind of the crazy thing. That was that was funny about a year ago in that interview, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I heard she's just kind of starting to make her wake, so now she's a superstar." But uh, Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm, I met her a couple years ago, and she's got a really rocking voice and. She and Eric Church did something a couple years back, um, so that that wouldn't be like a dream duet because um, I just I just dig the hell out of her voice and I think it'd be a really cool mix blend. So yeah, that's that's definitely a dream duet. So yeah, man, that'd be cool. Uh, and they're uh, they're uh, she's been keeping busy. So uh, dude, yeah, they're, they're another awesome human. I, I met her when I was like 16 years old and she was, uh, just super, super support. I mean, we, we didn't have anything, you know, we had a CD out, you know, we didn't even know how to get on Spotify and iTunes yet. And, uh, 
And she was like, oh my God, I have to check out your music and good luck and never quit and stuff. And I've kept up with her a couple of times on Twitter and she's the, the whole band, RJ and Joe and all of them. They're really great people. So, um, and they're, they've, yeah, they've been turning and burning pretty good too lately. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, all right. What about, uh, um, is there anything you think you could, uh, get into the Guinness book of world records for? Whew, that's a good one. Um, Guinness book of world records for it. Uh, nothing that I'd be proud of admitting for sure. <laughs> right. uh, um, maybe, um, gosh. Um, uh, oh, um, how do I phrase it? Probably like, um, maybe like youngest artist to have the target demographic be, uh, 40 to 50 year old women at shows, I guess. <laughs> That's, they're like, Oh my gosh, Bob Seeker and all this stuff. But, uh, it's, it's funny. We, every time we do a Facebook analytic of a show or a event that we're doing, it's like, what's your main target demographic that shows up and it's 40 to 50 year old women. So maybe youngest artist to do that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a random one out there that I can admit on a podcast. <laughs> right. Do you get that a lot? Is that with the Bob Seeger? No, oh, all the time. Yeah. I, I got it a couple weeks ago. This guy in Nashville, he came up and was like, man, you know, you look a lot like, uh, look a lot like Bob, young Bob Dylan. I met him and I was like, Bob Dylan, no, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> like, right. and then he goes like, did I say Bob Dylan? I'm in Bob Seeger. No, like with the long hair and the beard and stuff. And he goes, are you a singer? I was like, yeah. And he goes, ah, yeah. So you're definitely a young Bob Seeger. Yeah. So, I don't know. There's, there's worse people. I love Bob. Sure. Oh, but, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I've gotten that a lot. So but you ever, that's, do you ever throw that? Do you ever throw any of his covers in your set or anything? All the time. Yeah. All the time. So it goes over pretty well <laughs> given the look. So yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, uh night moves is uh you know just uh one of my yeah. favorites and uh i did it one night on uh karaoke and i had uh people like telling me like that it's how <laughs> obviously i'm pretty sure alcohol had a, something to do with it but they were saying that how good it sounded i'm like uh you know whatever like but it just it was uh it was funny i'm i'm not a singer by any means but it was that's one i like to get into and that's a good one to get into, uh, for sure. <laughs> and uh, my wife uh, sang some backgrounds with me, so like, uh, yeah, that's so, so, yeah. yeah, that's great. So, that's yeah, awesome. It was, it was uh, we- you know, the, yeah, that's some classic songs, man. I, I just did a deep dive on his catalog a little bit ago, and uh, it's always a, a lot of fun. Yeah, you always come back with something new, too, man. Shame on the Moon is like one that I. I Dope, deep dove i hadn't really gotten into that but i was like oh this is such a great one too you know he's yeah. got a million on main street's one of my favorites and oh man yeah. i love i love bob Seger. i saw him on his last tour that was a really good really really good show he had the mo- one of the most amazing bands i've ever seen it was like a 18 piece band it was freaking amazing yeah. it was really good yeah i got I've, uh, i think i've seen him twice uh and uh <coughs> one of them um uh, Whitey Morgan opened up, and one of them, uh, oh. Joe Joe Walsh, yeah, opened up. So, and Owen Keown, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've seen, I saw him in 2012. He was he was really impeccable, man. He was really good. Still, he still had it then for sure. Yeah. So, now that's that's cool. I, I grew up on the classic rock stuff like that, so that's all my bread and butter. Melon Camp yeah. and Tom Petty. That was my biggest regret that I never got to see Tom play. But um, all those guys, it's it's. Yeah, I saw Petty probably uh, somewhere in there, like 2010 or uh, 12 or something. And, uh, I forget what year it was, but uh, Black Crows opened up for him and uh, at the amphitheater, and it was a good party. Uh, and, yeah, but I'm I same with you. I kicked myself that I didn't make it to the <clears throat> the last time around, and uh, you know I would have. Uh, would have been a good night to to be there. Yeah, he was playing in Des Moines, Iowa, and I was, I'm about three hours from there, uh, kind of as a crow flies at least. And uh, Joe Walsh was opening for him, and that was I was like, man, that'd be such a good show. But I was in college and I was kind of broke, and that was yeah. a long. It was more the gas money that was going to break me than the the ticket. But um, I was like, oh, he'll come closer, and that was his last tour. So yeah. that was that was my biggest regret, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's like, you know, really how I try to live my life now. Like, uh, you know, uh, you just, you never know when those greats are going to be gone or, uh, you know, as, as we both spoke earlier, losing parents, you know, I just never know when anybody's time's up. And I try to live, uh, I've been, been a model for a long time. Actually, when, uh, in high school, I had a, a teacher that, uh, used to always, used to like live by the saying, live this five, like your last five. And, yeah. uh, and I've always kind of lived by that philosophy. Uh, you know, I'm always, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of times where I'm like, man, I don't know, but like, uh, but I always end up breaking down and buying the concert tickets. Cause that's somebody I want to, you know, go see for sure. I don't want to miss if that's going to be the last one. And, uh, those I always of- tell everybody, I always tell everyone, you never remember how much the concert ticket cost, right. you know, and that's kind of the biggest testament to it is it, I, I'm the same way. I'm very carpy diem about a lot of those shows and it's, uh, it's, it's really important. It's really, really cool to, to have the chance to see that or even like I said with your parents and stuff like that with any 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 older folks in your life and just take the five minutes to you know listen to any story or hear yeah. anything that you'll never regret it i love that cody johnson song till you can't that just came out and that's got a really good verse about that kind of stuff and yeah it's it's um that's it's really true so it's a good yeah, way to the way to live yeah yeah, I um, I agree, man. I feel like sometimes we get distracted, we get a little too busy with our own stuff, and we we forget about what's important sometimes. But uh, you know, it's good to, to to slow down and take realize what you got around you, and like and and live life uh, and have fun, and you know, every day live every day to the fullest we can. Absolutely, so, man. Yeah. Uh, well, Dane, this has been uh, super cool, man. <clears throat> yeah, thanks for having me, Shane. I appreciate you, man. I, uh, I'm really glad we got to meet and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get you here in town soon. And Absolutely. I'm planning on it. So and, be cool, uh, I'll let you know when we get something out that way. Yeah. Yeah. Actually we got uh, a couple of, you know, like, uh, um, st- you know, st- country bars, like that's what they, you know, our country venues and stuff like <clears throat> that are really just like trying to build up country music in town. So like, uh, there's a couple of a good spots you could, uh, you could come play and. I'll have to and, check them out, man, for sure. Yeah. We'll get out that way. No but, doubt. Uh, I, uh, but yeah, it'd be cool to see you and, uh, hang out and, and enjoy a beverage together. For sure, man. We will. Yeah. All right, Dane. Uh, well, thanks again. And I will, uh, see you soon. Appreciate you, man. Take her easy. Have a good day. You too, man.